Hey fam, Master Coach G here, thriving after 50, mind, body, soul. And in today's episode, I'm talking about cultivating inner peace and the benefits that it will help you to improve your health. Now, last week, I believe it was, I talked about soul health. This right here is almost like a part two to that. Um, Peace and tranquility, how to cultivate it, how it is a powerful goal, a powerful tool that will enhance and improve your quality of life. You got to stay tuned for this episode. I'm telling you, it is some life-changing information. This is Master Coach G, and I will see you on the inside. Hey fam, Master Coach G here, thriving after 50, mind, body, soul. And in today's episode, I'm talking about cultivating inner peace that will help improve your quality of life and your health. Cultivating inner peace and tranquility is a powerful tool and a great goal to have because it can significantly enhance your quality of life, okay? Cultivating inner peace and tranquility is an essential practice for overall well-being, especially as we navigate through the complexities of life after 50. You know, there's things that um, that come up uh after once we hit 50, um, that we have to really pay close attention to and navigate through um, with some things in life. And that's why it's important that we uh, learn how to cultivate uh, peace and tranquility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, give us some strategies so that we will be able to achieve uh, cultivating uh, peace and tranquility. Inner peace is very, very important. Um, And that's the reason why I think that we need to uh, learn how to cultivate it. So here's some of the things that we can do to be able to cultivate inner peace. Okay. Mindfulness, prayer, meditation. Okay. Now you can, however, whichever one of those you want to call it, but mindfulness, meditation, or prayer is very important. That's why this is at the top of the list, okay? If we just begin with that just a few few minutes a day, you know, I know maybe some of y'all aren't used to doing that, you know, meditating. I know most of us are used to praying, but I think that if we just really take uh, a few minutes at the start of our day, even before we even get out of bed, honestly, um, because that's what I do before I get out of bed. That's the first thing that I do is I, you know, I do my meditating and, and prayer. Um, Every morning, because it it helps me to get myself on the right track. It helps me to um, be mindful of the things that I need to be mindful of that's going to be coming up during the day. Um, here's something else that you can do too: is is, is some uh, some breathing, like you know, while you're praying or meditating. You know, just practice your breathing. You know, there's a rhythm to our breathing um, that also helps you to calm. Uh, your your body and your mind so that way while you're in the mindful meditation prayer state um, you are relaxed and will be able to um, cultivate that space that you are looking to get in uh, practicing mindful moments is is important and we need to do it every day um, being mindful of the state that we're in, especially when it comes to the things that we're thinking about. Um, and, and just being present in our everyday activities. And when I say being mindful, that's what I mean. It's like being mindful in the moment and being present in the moment in every activity, you know, whether it's eating, whether it's walking, whether it's washing dishes, you know, whatever it is, just be present in the moment. And here's something I highly, highly, highly recommend. And the reason why I highly recommend it is because it will give you a sense of clarity, peace, calmness, um, and you will be able to really have more clarity is a nature connection. 
you know. Now, I know in some parts of the country, it may be extremely hot and you may not be able to get outside, but take advantage of either the early morning or the late evenings and get outside, spend some time in nature, you know, whether it's walking in the park or simply just sitting in the garden, you know, connect with nature because it's calming. Okay. And you can find that you can meditate. Being in nature helps you to be able to focus. You know, you hear the birds, you feel the air, uh, the breeze on you, you, the sun is shining on your face. It's so many things um, that you can observe in nature. And, and not only that, but it also allows you to be able to see, feel, and hear God at that moment if you start to observe the trees and the breeze and the sun. That is all God. So yes, start getting outside and spend some time in nature. Seriously. Now, breath work, and most people don't know um, how to do this, so I would definitely recommend that you can find someone. Uh, there's lots of coaches out there that um, that are they specialize in breath uh, work, uh, the deep breathing, um, and it's it is definitely something that you have to practice. Uh, it's, it's not anything that comes natural. Yes, we breathe every day, but deep breathing, breath work does not come natural. And it is an exercise that will definitely help us to become more relaxed as we're inhaling deeply uh, in through our um, nose and exhaling through our mouth. Um, it does induce relaxation. So you might want to try that. They do have different techniques. They have like what they call a box uh, breathing, which is a technique where you can, uh, it's like you count, you know, you where you, you breathe in four counts and then you hold it for four and then you exhale for four. So that is a really good exercise, um, what they call box breathing. So I would recommend that you um, cert seek out a, um, a breath working coach because it is definitely, I mean, it does wonders for your brain, your lungs, your body. It is in your nervous system and your nervous system. Don't let me leave that part out because it definitely uh, helps us to calm our nervous system. You know, so let's say you have a, a moment of anxiety. I guarantee you, if you start doing some box breathing, breathe in, hold it for four, exhale, release for four. I guarantee you, you'll, you'll, you'll see a difference. So definitely try. And you could also go on YouTube. They do have a lot of information on YouTube in reference to deep breathing exercises. Now, um, and, and I've always spoke about this. The next thing is gratitude, practicing gratitude, whether it's journaling or meditation or whatever. But if you're journaling, I would say write down the things that you're most grateful for every day. You know, a lot of people journal. I'm not personally, I'm not a journal. I don't journal. But focusing on positive aspects of your life shifts your mindset. And it helps you to foster contentment. So, and you want to be in a state of contentment, you know, so journaling can help you do that from writing down the things that you're most grateful for, whether you do it in the evenings and which I think that probably the evenings would be better because it allows you to be able to, uh, reflect on your day and, um, you know, to be able to write down the things that you are most grateful for and allowing yourself the full experience of the positive emotions associated with your gratitude. So yes, um, either you can meditate um, gratitude uh, through prayer, meditation, gratitude, or you can journal. Either way, you, you can't lose, you know. And simplifying life. <laughs> now what I mean by that is decluttering. Yep, yep. Physical clutter can be a contributing factor to mental clutter, okay? And I know that, and if, and if you if you are, or if you know anyone, if you see that they have a lot of clutter in their environment, whether it's in their car, in their house, at their desk at work, when you see people who have a lot of clutter in their physical world, I can guarantee you they also have it in their mental and their emotional environment as well. So you want to declutter, okay, and to get rid of the things that no longer serve you. Do that on a regular. 
I mean, really, I, I think that like every 90 days, you know, you should like reevaluate where you are with your life and the things that no longer serve you, you should get rid of them so that you can make room for the things that are going to serve you. Okay. Now here's one that, that simplifies life for me which is saying no, okay? Because we do have to protect our time. Our time is the most precious commodity that we have, okay? And uh, by learning how to say no, uh, it gives us a chance to be able to ha align ourselves with our values and our priorities. And that's why we need to learn because we, we can't say yes to everything. We just can't do it, okay? Um. Create like expressions, you know, like I know some people are, uh, they like to, they like artwork or they like music, you know, engage in activities that, that will give you an opportunity to be able to create your own expression. Okay. Whether it's playing an instrument, whether it's drawing, whether it's writing, you know, because sometimes those things bring people a sense of peace. Um, that's why journaling, you know, a lot of people are doing journaling because it helps them to be in a calm state, you know, and whether you write poetry or you write in scripts, whatever it is, if it takes you to a calm place and that's what you need to be doing. Okay. Here's what's next. And again, you know, these things all fall under the category of those six pillars, the six principles that I always talk about, the physical activity. That is, that is, that's another key. That's another key. We have to incorporate some type of physical activity in our daily routine. We, we, we really must do that because that enhances both physical and mental tranquility. Okay. You know, it don't have to be, um, you know, going to the gym, you don't have to do weight training. You can do simple things, you know, like if you like, you know, karate or you like, like Tai Chi or you like uh, um, yoga or Pilates, you know, whatever it is that's going to give you a mindful uh, mindfulness and that's going to promote relaxation and inner peace. So, Physical activity is good for us, mind, body, soul. We, we have to have physical activity in our life. Movement is important. Now, here's the other aspect, which is a spiritual practice, okay? And, you know, prayer or affirmation, some people, you know, like affirmations, um, but it's pretty much, to me, it's pretty much the same thing. For... Uh, for those of us who are spiritual, you know, we are more inclined to pray and repeat the positive affirmations. And when I say positive affirmations for those of us who pray, what we're doing is we're reciting and repeating the scriptures that keeps us in a positive state of mind. Um, reading the scriptures helps us to engage in um, a calmness. You know, especially when we understand and apply, when we apply the scriptures, okay? Um, and those positive, the, the positive affirmations from the scriptures definitely bring about a sense of calmness. These are the things that we have to practice on a daily basis. We have to practice these things on a daily basis. Now, here's another thing. Healthy relationships, okay? That is so important to have positive connections, OK, to surround yourself with people who's going to be supportive. They have to be positive. They have to be uplifting. You want to have and maintain healthy relationships because that helps you to stay in a peaceful place. Nobody wants to be fighting like cats and dogs every day. Every time you turn around, there's some drama. No, no and no. OK, that's one of the times you need to say no. OK, because you don't need that in your life. With that comes along setting boundaries. Establish clear boundaries to protect your peace, okay? We all have to set boundaries to protect our peace. And there's things that, you know what, if, if, it, if it's not benefiting me, then I'm not going to have no part of it because now you disrupted my peace and I'm not going to allow you to do that. And nor should you. you know, and it doesn't matter who it is. And that's the reason why having the healthy relationships and the boundaries that go along with those healthy relationships are important. Because if we don't have those boundaries, we will be in relationships that will be draining. 
And that is not healthy for us. It's not good for our health. It's not good for our minds. It's not good for our bodies. And it's definitely not good for our soul. Okay. Now, here is something else that is key that we must learn how to practice. Okay. We must learn how to be kind to ourselves. Okay. Practicing self-compassion by treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we offer other people. We have to extend ourselves that. We have to extend ourselves self-compassion, okay? And and let go of, you know, trying to be perfect. And, and just embrace that, you know, hey, I am human. So extend yourself the same type of compassion that you offer to other people, okay? And engage in uh, activities of like self-love, you know, make time for your hobbies and activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Okay. That's a part of self-compassion, you know, and incorporate these practices on a daily basis can help you to cultivate a deeper uh, sense of inner peace and tranquility. It will help you with your overall quality of life. And it will definitely improve your health, your well-being by integrating some practices into your life that you can cultivate. And they, they will last because what happens, what you want to do is you want to be able to continue to cultivate and practice these things every day. Okay, If you practice these things on a daily basis, the self-compassion, setting the boundaries, healthy relationships spiritual practices, uh, physical activity, journaling, um, creating expressions of the things that you enjoy, you know, whether it's music or painting, whatever it is, simplifying your life by decluttering, okay? Uh, practice gratitude with meditation and prayer, you know, even if you want to journal, that's that's another good thing. But these things are the things that if you cultivate these things and practice them on a daily basis, you will be able to see a difference in your life, in your mindset, in your health, in your overall well-being. You will definitely see a difference. And that's why this is so important to learn how to cultivate inner peace. Okay, because by integrating these practices into your life, you will be able to cultivate lasting, lasting inner peace and tranquility. So when challenges happen, guess what? You have a you can go to your toolbox. And I talked about the toolbox a couple of weeks ago. These are the things you need in your toolbox. So when life starts to get challenging, you go to your toolbox and you pull out uh, uh, decluttering. You know what I'm saying? Pull out the tools that you need to declutter. Whatever the situation is, that's what we need to be able to do. So, yes, and it may take time to learn how to become consistent with this. But if you put in the effort, it will be well worth it. I promise you it will. I promise you. Because there is nothing like inner peace and tranquility. Hey, that's what I have for you today. I hope this episode has added value to your life. Thank you for joining me here on Thriving After 50, Mind, Body, Soul. Hey, but before I get out of here, I want to give a shout out to my listeners here in the United States, Canada, Belgium, the UK, Mexico, Russia, France, Brazil, Ireland, India, Bangladesh, Australia, Nigeria, and South Africa. And the audience is continuing to grow. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you for listening today. Hey, if this podcast has been a benefit to you, please subscribe. Follow me, write me a review, and share it with someone that you think will benefit from this podcast. I appreciate you all, and I love you so much. Remember, knowledge applied is power. This is Master Coach G, and I will see you on the next level.